get on this side and look at that half inch beautiful What is up DIY Nation? Welcome back to another episode of View Floor, the channel bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. And today, well, we are stuck here at Home Depot, as you can see. Uh, it looks like one of the hoses that goes to whatever cools my truck down has broke. So I've got somebody on the way to come help me fix that, but in the meantime, I wanted to let you know something. Today we are going to be going how to install a laminate reducer from tile to laminate. Now these reducers are made by Simple Solution and they're very, very similar to the Pergo 4-in-1. You guys have seen me install those on carpet, on concrete with no screws. These are exactly the same ones, but in the last video where we did a transition from tile to laminate, we did a T-mold. And I told you in that video, it would be better if we had a reducer because it wouldn't be so steep as it would be with a T-mold. But that's what the customer bought at the time and they were they were sold on that i guess they couldn't find something to match in the reducers but anyway today we actually have something that is a reducer now these four in ones you can make them a t-mold you can make them a reducer you can make them a carpet you know a bull nose reducer for a carpet or if you're going up against the edge of something you can use them for that but for today we're going to be putting these together and using the slope part of it and be doing a reducer so if you're interested in that or if that's something you're going to be doing soon stick around because you're not going to want to miss that all right, let's don't waste any time and jump right in. Let's go. Let's take a look at this here. Let's see. Set my block right here. Not a very good idea how much this thing actually drops. You know what? That's really only a half inch. Let's check it out of here. Check it in a couple spots. Half inch there too. Oh, I'll check it over here now. Hey, you can see whoever did this tile here. There's a little bit of a lip from here to here. I think that's going to be okay though. For the most part, it's pretty flat all the way across. Now there's a chunk missing there. We'll have to figure out something for that. And there's a piece right there hiding back there. You can see it. All right. Anyway, this one right here. Let's check it on this side. And look at that half inch. Beautiful. Alright, that's our job. Alright guys, so here we go. We got the these are called four and ones. They're not the five and ones. They only do four features, but you know, they're my favorite. And these are actually made by simple solutions, so, but they're real similar to the Pargo four and ones. They're actually like the identical thing, so Imagine somebody makes them and just stamps a different name on them. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do this. This is what we got. I'm going to go cut a couple pieces so you can see the difference between a T-mold and a reducer and why I chose to do a reducer today. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to have to get in here and do work and lay stuff in here. So this, I need to clean up and make sure that i got a clear path here to lay anything in there that I need to. So I'm just take a second to clean out this grout. You guys hang tight. You definitely don't want to knock the grout out from underneath the tile because you need something to support it. And somebody steps on it and there's a void underneath there, they could break the end of the tile off. So I'm just breaking off anything that sticks out in, in my area. I right, should do it. Right there. All right, so this is what they send you when they send the pack out. You got this, which is a T-mold, as you can see. And then you have this little piece right here. This is what you're going to do if you're going to go from something higher down to nothing like vinyl. And that makes a reducer. You just stick that in there from the side. It looks like that. Right? Then they also send out this one right here, too. This is if you're doing carpet or if you're going up against the edge of something. You put it together. And you put it together and it'll look like that. And then you 
You just come in, tuck your carpet down right there. That's why it's flat like that. But now we have to go down from tile down to this laminate right here. So let's check that out. We're gonna wanna use this one right here. Now I know when you put this together, they don't always do the best job at coloring that. See that white line right there? You're gonna have to color that yourself. Or else you can just leave it and somebody will be like, <laughs> I just don't care about his work. All right, anyway, we'll do that. But uh, anyway, it's gonna go like that and it's gonna set down like that. Now, I don't know about you, but that looks beautiful as far as, you know, how far down it goes. Let's take a look from the side. So it'll sit like that right there. And that's almost perfect. I mean, it's almost the perfect height. So the problem is, how are we gonna attach it down there? All right, so. That's where this comes into play. This little thing is gonna have to go down in there. All right, so this is how this is gonna go like that. And of course, this little spot down here has to be clipped into this thing right here. But you can see when we lay that down inside there, it, it's never gonna reach down in there. We have to make sure that we build this thing up so that it clips in. When this thing clips in, it clips in like this. See, it'll clip in like that. I remember as you press it down, it goes like that. And so, as you can see, this thing ain't never gonna reach that if we put that down inside there. So we have to build this floor up. And that's where these things come in, these little strips I cut. These I set inside here, and they allow me to still have a quarter of an inch expansion gap. Let's see how it builds the floor up level there. Now my metal track, you see that? Even still we're a little bit, a little bit low. So, this thing they sent out right here, this thing can be used as a spacer, and it slides up underneath there. As you can see when you clip it down inside there, Now you have the adequate spacing that you need. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so I went ahead where the trim is, where it comes in to make those reveals. I went ahead and notched mine to go around that. That way I can lip up on this tile real good and cover some of that messed up tile that was over here, but still be able to expand over there. Okay. Next, we need to cut our metal transition strip. That I will go ahead and make it the length of this. Let's do uh, let's do 31 and three quarters. Why not? These I just cut with 10 snips. Now the placement of this is very important because wherever you put it is where that track is going to click in. So you got to make sure you put it all together and then line it up. All right, so. Up against my trim piece there. Looks like we're gonna be out right there. Yeah, and they sent these screws too, so. That's what we use to attach it with. All right, so put it together here. Like it's gonna be in the track. Line it up over here against our door jam there. Beautiful, beautiful. Right out there, right out front. Looks like right on the front of that wooden strip, so that's beautiful. Okay then, that's where our first screw goes. You know what? I forgot we need to put that little black strip in first. So this thing right here. Just cut it the length of what that is. Alright, so I can see that it's right out there towards the front of my my wood strip probably on the same 
same on this side, so let me double check that. That way we can go ahead and mark it. That's gonna be like, so it's looking like we're about an eighth inch away from that board right there. So that's what I'm going with. All right, so this thing slaps up underneath here. to build us up a little bit higher. It's actually just a spacer and it fits on the bottom perfectly just like that. Now see, we're built up perfect the way we need to be built up. Now we can drive our screw. There we go. Now we just finish it off out through here. Now, when you screw these screws in, if you're not careful, it'll pinch the sides of these in. When you're trying to put this thing in, it is not fun. So wherever you put the screws, just kind of, you know, put your hammer in there and make sure it's pounded out. Not a whole lot, but just enough to open it back up to where it was. I just like take my flooring hammer, put it in there and it kind of pries it out. All right, here we go. Here's the true test. So this piece goes out in front like this. Make it flush right there. And try to clip it in and slide it down to where it goes. It feels right. I think we're locked in. All right, so, and it looks good down here. So we just all the way across. Don't hit it so hard as you break your tile. That right there is in. And that's how we install a reducer from tile to laminate. See that drop? It's beautiful. All right, guys, but that's going to do it for this one. Hope you learned something. Hope you got some value out of that. If you did, don't forget, smash that like button. And if you're looking for more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so you can be notified when I make more videos like this. This thing just came on and it's making a whole lot of noise, so I guess that means it's time for us to get out of here. Okay, guys, until next time, don't forget, take care and stay safe. Peace.